What up, brother? Oh, you need an extended clap? Oh. <laughs> Where's my champion? Where's my champion rock music at? <laughs> now you you definitely uh is championship form, man. Sure. Season two of Wu Tang and American Saga. It is almost here. September eighth. Yes. Hulu, baby. Season yes. two. Uh Jizza. Should we call you Jizza right now? We calling you Jizza or we calling you John Yell? John Yell. Man, we, we in the Wu, we in the Wu moments. Wu Ooh, spirit. I love it. It's a Wu holiday, it's Wu weekend, it's Wu everything. So yeah, I mean, why not? Go for it. My man, listen, um, this season too is long anticipated for real. Because mm -hmm. you know, people say that. Like, oh, we've been anticipating, right. but there was COVID, man. Yeah. Like, we've we, we been waiting almost two years for this season, bro. How, how did it feel being a part of the cast and having to go through that whole, like, when are we filming? Right. When are we getting back? Are we going to oh, be in the bubble? Oh my God, it was gruesome. It was the most gruesome experience I've had to experience this far. Like, we didn't know what was going on. We just got stopped. Like, we were supposed to go right back into it, get ready for season two, and then everything just stopped. So it was like, whoa, what do we do now? Like, do we even have a season? Are we getting a season two? The world's changed up. So are they going to forget about us? Are they still going to love us anymore? Hey, <laughs> I barely watch any TV, but that first season, I watched every episode i found out okay. so many things about the woo i didn't know <laughs> that, uh, same here same with me there's either even though i'm from staten island new york there's a lot of stuff that i've learned just by playing jizza and just by seeing how this story unfolds so yeah it's been great to study for that role did you like um i don't know if you were already previously a jizza fan maybe being from staten island you are but like uh um, no i wasn't i wasn't a jizza fan but I was a, a fan of the uh, Wu-Tang Clan before, a heavy fan. Like, uh, that's all I listened to growing up. I mean, that's all we had to listen to where I was from. I'm from, like I said, I'm from Staten Island. So we not near Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, man. We our own borough, our own stuff away from everything. So Wu-Tang Clan is who we had to listen to. And then to come around and be playing it is like, okay, this, this is maybe this is what the universe was preparing me for, I guess. So I want to know, just as an actor, like everybody had to go through so, so much during the pandemic. Um, what kind of did you go? What were some of the emotions that you went through during the pandemic? Just as an actor, you know, Wu Tang aside, what were those emotions that you were going through with everything being shut down, forced to be inside? You can't touch your fans, even family. Like you know, we haven't even had, got a chance to speak to you since the pandemic. Um. A lot of restless nights, a lot of uh, unknown, not knowing. I did a lot of time soul searching, meditating, a lot of inner work. I, I took the time to do a lot of inner work and, and learn a lot about myself and continue to grow. Um, but it was a lot of sitting down and just being by myself, being quiet, strategizing and stuff like that. I mean, couldn't do anything. It was it was nerve wracking. I had my nerve wracking moments, get a little anxiety, like, oh my God, is this, what is the world coming to? like? I just got on. I just, just, just got <laughs> shot. Like Man. everything is flowing, everything is going right now, and then all of a sudden, boom! So it was a, it was an emotional roller coaster. But I'm glad, I'm glad I kept my faith. Um, God gave me the strength to keep my sanity, and yeah. I stayed focused, and I did what's most important, which is the inner work, like I explained earlier. Yeah, I mean that's got to be like crazy, right? You grind your whole life for this moment. It's here, and it's received well. Like you heard Noah saying, yeah. like, he don't even watch TV. Wifey had no idea what's going on, but she was caught up in the storyline. It was just so well executed. Yeah, man. Um, who came up to you in, like, the last, I don't know, year and a half and surprised the crap out of you? Them saying they're a fan of the show, they're a fan of your work. Who stepped to you and was like, John L., I fuck with you? Uh, when Migos, when Migos actually, I, I seen Migos... And I seen their DJ. I forgot where I was at. I think I was at Floyd Mayweather's party. Okay, Life Flex. Um, Go ahead now. Life yeah. Flex. <laughs> and then they and then uh, he came up to me. He was like, yo, man, we a big fan of the show. We love your work, man. And I'm just like, what? I, I <laughs> know me. Like, what? That's crazy. Like, y'all all the way up there. Like, excuse me, but y'all, y'all rocking with little old us. It was it was it was humbling experience, but those are some of my favorite artists. So right. to get that from them, I very I received it very well. And Shout out to Migos. Man. Wait, the, you know, you, oh my bad. Sorry, no, sorry. I'm just saying, like, like uh, Quavo found himself on the uh, Narco show, right? We seen Quavo. Oh, yeah. Narco. Did Quavo try to finesse his way into like season two or three? <laughs> uh nah, he ain't, not not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. We might have to get him up in there somewhere. Get him a New York accent. 
But, you know, you've also been in a Tupac's movie, and then we're talking about the Wu-Tang. So it kind of seems like with your career, you've been able to fuse music and acting because you're also an artist as well, right? You know what? I ain't think about that. I haven't thought about Well, actually, I got cut from the Tupac movie. That right. was the, my first real introduction right. to this whole Hollywood acting right. movie production business. I got cut. But and that might have been a good thing. <laughs> might have been a good thing. But it's you're saying. saying that still sparked up, like, hold on. So far, yeah, music has been a big part of my uh, acting career this far. And I think I might have to dive deeper into what, I mean, I freestyle. I rap with my friends and stuff. I go in the studio. I, I've made a few things, not nothing like where, oh, yeah, let's put it together. But it's been on my conscience lately, and I have to I have to really stop. Uh, I have a bad procrastination problem when my friends tell me, like, yo, you need to rap. Yo, you rap with Jizzy, you rap with RZA. Like, what else does the universe have to show you? Come out with an album, right. you look like a rapper. You have, you're natural a rapper. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. I, I, I'm playing around. But I'm definitely getting into it. I'm definitely moving into it. Um, got some people helping me with a project coming out soon during this woo season. So, yeah, something to look forward to. Going back to what you and Teddy were just talking about, you talking about how uh, like Quavo came up to you. But I'm curious. I'm sure you've had to have conversations with Jizza himself, right? And what has he said to you? Well, it wasn't it wasn't Quavo, but it was DJ Durrell, and he Quavo. Oh, okay. DJ Durrell. DJ Durrell. <laughs> Shout out to my boy, but they expressed their interest in Showbuck. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, it's all good. It's all good. I was just curious to know what, like, I know you've had to have conversations with Jizza, and I was just curious to know, like, what those conversations went like, what he said. Um, he just want he just basically wants, like, the story of him to be like told as he sees it, right? You know, is he's very he's very like happy with as performance wise. That's the most thing I worry about. Yo, I want to know if you happy about my performance for Chan. Yo, he's totally happy about that. He loves the work that I'm doing. I mean, he posts me on his page and stuff like that, shouting me out and stuff. So he, he's very happy about that that part. But um, yeah, like every time I got a script. I make sure I send it to him like, yo, how would you say it? How would you say this? Because sometimes in Hollywood, they don't always, they wouldn't, especially with biopics, they were not going to always put or use the terminology that the actual rapper or the icon that they're uh, talking about, they're not going to use their actual language and how they talk. So with Jizza, he was like, yeah, he wanted to get that on point. Yo, I wouldn't say this, yo. I wouldn't say this. I wouldn't say this. Yo, say it like this. So that was, that was actually, that was a lot of help. That Has uh, Jizza ever seen something that he wasn't too fond of or was like, nah, we can't do it that way or you got to switch it up or like? Um, nah, not yet, not yet. <laughs> He's like, just don't, just don't fuck it up. You know what I mean? Down there, just don't mess it up. Just, just don't mess it up, man. Yeah, man. Well, listen, season two, Hulu, you know what I'm saying, presents Wu-Tang and American Saga. Um, I'll ask you this, man. We, we were looking at your IG and we seen you were hooping, bro. We seen you out here. Look like you're training for for somebody. Um, who have you played? Artist, m- like musician, actor, whoever. Who's the nicest person on the court? Because it seems like you could really hoop. That's what it's, I'm perceived that you can ball. That's, I, that's uh, what I do. I'm a hooper. Like I'm a real hooper. Like okay. that's what I. That's what <laughs> and I was, you and Davies? I've been hooping. Yeah, that's who would win out of you and Davies? Who gonna win? Davies can't. He can't. He can't. You know he can't touch me, man. <laughs> six, 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 seven. I tell him every day. We gonna send or uh, text him like, yo, you can't, can't mess with me, man. Ah, uh, see, but see that. I, see, he didn't. He didn't quote an actual game that way. Mm-hmm. He just says hypothetically. Cause I'm sure if we get Davies on here, come on, man. He's gonna nah, start talking nah, that Brooklyn nah. shit. Dave, Dave, don't, Dave don't even touch basketball no more. He don't even touch a ball. <laughs> you just called him washed. He oh, the knees won't help. <laughs> yeah, man, the knees won't help, man, not at all. But um, the heart. I think the most the person that. I, okay, let me see. It had mm-hmm. it got to be even between Quavo and Chris Brown. I mean, both of them can't mess with me, but it's <laughs> both like, between them. Between them two, they like the the entertainers. I'm like, oh, okay, they can hoop. Y'all, 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 no, like Chris Brown, both. Chris Brown and Quavo. Yeah, they're both really, really, really good when it comes to basketball. Nah, I'm a man on John Hill. I don't know. You got like John Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm over in Staten Island. Like Shaolin. Energy, you know what I'm saying, son? <laughs> Yo, look, I'm gonna ask you this though. I, this is like, it's a super. Generic question, but it's really not because like you're you're in there, right? Like I see uh, behind the scenes, you and Davies, you were like talking about like how he, he had the pistol in his hand. You're like, man, he really in character. Um, but because you are behind the scenes, what what's a behind the scenes moment that you're like, bro? Whether whether it maybe it happened on screen, like I can't wait for the fans to see this scene, or I can't wait for the fans to know about this specific moment that happened backstage, bro. Because only you were in it, bro. 
Um, we were in the studio and we were recording a certain iconic, legendary song that really helped Wu Tang get boom. That right. that boom. We were recording that boom for Wu Tang to mm -hmm. get him out of here. Right. And I was just we were in the studio doing it. And I was just the energy in that studio. And when we this was our first time and we've been anticipating recording this song and performing it for ever since episode one. We didn't do it until about episode six, seven. We didn't do it. But we've been anticipating because once we found out we were doing the song, everybody was hyped, especially me. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta go crazy now. <laughs> and, that, and that scene in that studio scene right there, man, you you can't tell us that we weren't Wu Tang clan. I mean, Rizza came out of the nowhere. He came out of nowhere. We didn't even know he was there. He came out of the director's village and just as soon as the director said, cut, 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 he came in and just looked at us for like five, 10 seconds, like. And the trans, like, oh my God, like, yo, yo, y'all brought me back to 93, yo, yo, Jizza. I mean, Johnnell, yo, yo, you look like my cousin. <laughs> yo, you look like my cousin, yo, oh, yo, Dirty. I mean, Asan, yo, TJ, yo, you was going like, so for him to even react like that, that I want everybody to see that scene. And they're going to feel it. They're going to be able to feel it. I mean, I don't even have to name the scene. Y'all going to see it, though. Y'all going to be like, oh, that's Man, the scene. You just so the whole scene. I know. Right I'm so there. ready. Right I mean, right we, we've seen so many different, you know, biopics and different movies where you emulate an artist. I mean, I just saw Aretha where Jennifer Hudson was emulating um, Aretha Franklin. So I kind of, I've always wanted to know as an actor, what is kind of some of the behind the scenes that you have to go through really to really tap into the artist that you're portraying, especially when they're alive uh -huh. and on set? Like, do you have to like talk to them for a certain amount of hours and like pick their brain? Like, how do you tap into a whole nother person that's like you're emulating that people know? Not a fictional character. Well, fortunate enough, my character is still alive and just mm -hmm. so I definitely, definitely on the phone a lot with him, texting, calling, picking up, just picking his brain. But um, a lot of the times I wanted to, I didn't want to take, I felt like I didn't, not that that was an easy way out, but I just wanted to also put my creative imagination mm. to the test and just went to YouTube and just watched all of his interviews, all of his videos, watched everything about a million times, no exaggeration, lock my door, turn my phone off, and just from the way he bites his, his <laughs> right. lip, where he holds his gold tooth, I just tried to literally dial in on everything. And I, I had fun doing my research. I had fun doing my character research. And character all right, well, such. speaking of research, what's your favorite Jizzle song? Uh, my favorite Jizzle song? Uh, gotta be either Liquid Swords or Duel of the Iron Mike. Oh, damn. You said Liquid Swords. You got me. That's my only question. I just had to check to <laughs> make sure you know what I'm saying. Yo, with that being said, bro, listen. All right. Hulu, Wu-Tang, American Saga, September 8th is, is back. We're celebrating season two. You seen what Noah just did. I mean, Wu-Tang Clan is some of, like, the most hardcore fans. Oh, yeah. We are, yeah, we hardcore How with How often team. does someone step up to you and try to test your gangster? Oh. When it comes to oh. the somebody just tried to test me. Gangster <laughs> that, the funny that you said that yesterday, somebody just tried to test my gangster, and, and, and I'm like, yo, say? you understand? Like, I'm really from Staten Island. This ain't Hollywood. This ain't no TV stuff. Okay, like, talk, John. L. I'm really true to this. Like, I'm really, I'm what Wu baby. Like, I know, mm. I, I know my my stuff, and like, I'm really about this Wu Tang Feng Shui. You know, you know Fourth Chamber. Fourth Chamber, man. I know Guillotine Swords. Uh, protect, y'all ain't know Protect Your Neck had the remix. Y'all ain't even know that. Janelle, well, like a remix with a different beat? Chill. Ah. Or, or. <laughs> Janelle, do not let them ever come for who you are, okay? Let them know. Tell them to put some respect on your name. But I want to know, you know, how do you like this whole, you know, emulating an artist? Is this something that you could see yourself? Like, Jamie Foxx, he's, like, mastered being able to be different people. Is there anybody else that you could see yourself being on the screen like this? Yeah, definitely. I definitely uh, want to do some more biopics. I want to be like a, uh, I want to be like a, rock, a part of a rock band. Like you see, what I'm saying like, not Rick James so much, but like. Uh, yeah, you playing Rick James? That'd be crazy. Crazy. Me Hendrix Ooh. type. Bad Brains, um, Black Punk band. 
even if they do Bobby Brown again, even though shout out to my boy Woody McClain. Matter of fact, yeah. he did that. I got nah, yo, he, he, he did, did that. Let's be just keep it. He, did, he did that. He stepped that. But I definitely would could see myself playing another Bobby. Now, probably not right after this, right? Right. Unless the money's right, of course. But <laughs> Go ahead now. definitely could see myself playing like an iconic singer or something like that, part of a band. And you know, what I mean, I want to act like I'm really know how to play the guitar and some more sing. music. That's dope. Hey, look, uh, listen. We know you're busy. I know you, you, we got, you know, you got things yeah, to man. do, Come my on, man. man. I got, don't stop. I got a line outside. I got a oh, line. I ain't gonna, listen, I ain't gonna hold you that long, but I gotta ask you the question <laughs> everybody wants to know this week, man. Drake or Kanye? Drake or Kanye, Drake man? Kanye? Drake or Kanye? Janelle. Kanye. Kanye. So, I'm sorry, say it again. Yay. Kanye. There we go. He Kanye. said yay. He the said genius. yay. Because he knows. The genius has spoken. Formerly known as Kanye Omari West, he's going with So you're not yay. a certified lover boy? Ah. Come he's on, man. It's Shaolin, did bro. You like, did you like the album, John I'm not going to lie. I listened to Certified Lover Boy about a good hour or two ago. What? I think I, I think I got to give it another run. I'm not going to. You not, already I, heard it? Drake's, Drake's my favorite artist, so I could be, I could be this right. heavy on him, but I got to give it another run. But yay. Yay. I'm a Gemini, so you know it's yay all the way. My man. Mm-hmm. My man. All right. Well, hey, listen. His name is John L. Young. Uh, Wu-Tang American Saga season two, September 8th. You already say Hulu presents. My man, I will say it is an honor to talk to you. When we first talked to you, you were like happy to be here, man. And, and now we're looking at a at a solid man who knows his talent. So we can't wait to see you grow and excel. And we're ready for the next project, man. And he got the Carl Knott, so you know he's feeling himself. <laughs> oh yeah, I got a movie coming out in theaters November 25th, A Holiday Chance starring Sharon Leo and the Fessa Williams, directed by Jamal Hill. All theaters coming out. Make sure y'all yeah. go see that. Amazing. Say less. I'm so proud of you. Johnnell Young, my man, everybody clap it up for my man. The Jizza. Thank you, bro. You be good, man. Be easy. Thanks, Janelle. Peace.